Hey Alpha Shooters, it's Tim from alphashooters.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my top 10 recommended accessories for the Sony A6400. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blitz through these 10 accessories really, really quickly. And if there are any that you're interested in, then I'm gonna talk about each one in a little bit more detail. However, before I do that, please do check down in the description field for this video or the pinned comment, and there you'll find a link to my A6400 accessories guide on my website where you're gonna find all of these 10 accessories listed, as well as many, many more accessories for a Sony A6400. And I also add new accessories on there as they become available. You'll also find down in the description field a link to my A6400 lenses guide, as well as sample images. So with that said, let's blitz through these 10 accessories and then we'll jump into each one in a little bit more detail. All right, so first accessory is gonna be a screen protector, then a rocket air blaster, Batteries and dual charger, memory card, travel tripod, external microphone, remote control options, wrist strap and neck strap, so kind of two accessories in one there, case and I also might mention a rucksack that I picked up recently that's really really good and a cold shoe relocation plate. Right, now let's jump into those in a little bit more detail. So the first accessory I'll recommend for the A6400 is a screen protector. Now, you may or may not be aware that the A6400 does actually include a very, very thin screen protector installed direct from the factory. However, it's very easy to damage. Therefore, I would recommend installing another screen protector simply over the top of the LCD screen. Now, the one I'm using, there are many third-party options on the market. However, the one I use and the one I would recommend is the Sony PCK LM17 screen protector. Now, although this is actually badged as a screen protector for the A6300 and A6000, it works and fits absolutely fine on the A6400. I've been using it since day one and I have absolutely no issues whatsoever with using the touchscreen. This still works perfectly. And yeah, it sticks on nicely, it hasn't fallen off yet. I'm also using the same screen protector on my Sony A6500 for well over one year now. And again, I've had absolutely no issues with it. So that's my recommendation for a screen protector. It is the Sony PCK LM17. And the next accessory I'm gonna recommend is a Rocket Air Blaster. Now, this particular one is by a company called Giotos or Giotos. I don't know how that is pronounced but this is the large version. Now these air blasters, they're really, really good for blowing dust and bits off your lens from out of your sensor, out of your EVF, and also off filters as well. They're really, really, really useful. What I used to do before I had one of these was simply wipe the dust around the end of a lens with a lens cloth, and it never really went anywhere. But if you've got one of these, you can simply blow it away, and sometimes you don't even need to reach for a lens cloth. So I've always got one of these in my gear bag, I've always got one at home. They are really, really good and useful little device. So that's for Rocket Air Blaster. Moving on, so the next accessory I'm gonna recommend is a battery and a dual charger. Now, the original Sony NPFW50 battery that comes with the Sony A6400 is very expensive. So if you're looking to replace that and purchase one directly from Sony, you will probably be shocked by how much it costs. I think it's around about $50, give or take. Now, I'm using these third-party batteries from a company called RavPower, and you can pick up two of these batteries together with a dual charger, I think for around about $35, but the price does vary, which is an awful lot cheaper than the original Sony batteries. Now, I've been using these RavPower batteries for a couple of years already, and I've never had any issues with them whatsoever. They are Power VA6400 for pretty much the same time, as the original battery. However, you will find that after a couple of years, they don't tend to hold their charge so well, but they are so cheap, you can simply replace them. So that's my recommended battery and dual charger for the Sony A6400. It's the one from RAV Power. The next accessory is the rather important memory card. Now, there are millions of these little guys on the market. You know, it's quite confusing as to which ones to go for. However, the ones that I'm using are the SanDisk Extreme Pro memory card. This is the 95 MBS version, 
Um, it's V30 rated, which means if you shoot 4K video, you should be good. And yeah, there's not much to say about it really. It does what it says on the tin. I've been using these for years without any issue whatsoever. Um, if you're thinking about going for a faster card, there's really not much point because the A6400 writes at a maximum speed of around about 35 MBS. So going for a much, much faster card, you're just throwing your money away. So that's my recommended memory card. It's for SanDisk Extreme Pro 95 MBS version. And next up, we have a rather handy travel tripod. Now, this is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo travel tripod. And it's a great little guy. Um, let me just show you how it works. So it's got three legs. Simply pull them out like so. You mount the A6400 like this. I'll get there in a second. There we go. So as you can see, it's very, very, very stable. Now you simply, if you want to move a ball head, you simply loosen off the screw here and you can turn it around like so. You can also put it into a portrait position. When you're happy with your position, you simply tighten it off like so. Now you can also extend the legs like this, which gives you a little bit more height and it also gives you a little bit more flexibility if you're on um, unlevel ground. So you can actually have five different positions here on these legs. So you can, you've got quite a bit of adjustment available. Now you can also drop it down. I think at this height, it's around about 20 centimeters. Um, but if you flip this little switch here, it goes all the way down and you're down to about just 10 centimeters, give or take off the ground. Now it supports, I think it's a maximum weight of around about 2.5 kilos. And in terms of weight, it weighs only about 250 grams, of course, without the camera attached. So it really is pretty lightweight. It's also, it's very stable. And yeah, it goes everywhere with me these days. And it's a really, really great little travel tripod. Now, well, I would mention one thing, and that is they also do, Manfrotto also does, another Pixie tripod, which is this one here. Just as you can see, it is a lot smaller than the Evo version. However, this version, I don't particularly like it at all because one, you've got no flexibility with the legs. They don't extend, there's no adjustments. And it's one fixed height. And also this ball head is quite frankly useless. Um, as you can see, this is meant to be fixed, but it's really, really, really loose. If you push in this, button here, it gets even looser, so you can move it around. But when you release it, it's supposed to be fixed, but it's, as you can see, it's not. And it certainly does not hold or support the weight of a Sony A6400. And there's also no option to put it into a portrait position. Therefore, my, I would recommend giving this one a miss and instead going for the Manfrotto Pixie Evo version. So yeah, that's my, my travel tripod recommendation. And the next accessory I'm going to talk about is an external microphone. So if you're not overly happy with the quality of the internal microphone on the A6400, which isn't the best, then thankfully you do have the option to add an external microphone. Now, the one I'm using here is the Rode Video Micro. This is a great little microphone. It's not too expensive. I think around about 50 or $60, give or take. And you simply attach it to the hot shoe, or in this instance, the small rig, cold shoe, as I'm using a relocation plate, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. And then you connect it to the microphone port on the A6400. It also gets the power through the mic port, so there's no need for an additional battery. Um, it comes with uh, this shock mount here, and you also get a wind defender with it too. So it's a great little microphone. It's not too big, it's not too heavy. Yeah, this is the Rode Video Micro. Now, if you want an, a wireless solution, then there is the Rode Wireless Go, which I'm using here. However, I can't recommend it just yet because this is the very first time that I've used it. So wait a few weeks and I'll be able to give you my opinion, but it does have very good reviews. So if you are looking for a wireless solution, then I do recommend checking out some re reviews for the Rode Wireless 
go. So yeah, that's my external microphone recommendation for the A6400. And the next accessory I'm gonna recommend is a remote control. Now, you may or may not be aware that you can actually use your smartphone to remotely control the Sony A6400. However, it's a bit of a faff to connect and I would rather not drop my phone whilst I'm out in the hills or somewhere. Therefore, I, my preference is to use a separate remote control. Now you have a couple of options. You have this one, which is a Sony RMT, let me check, DSLR 2 remote control. Now this is infrared based and indoors it works really, really well and it will work up to a distance of around three to four meters and it also works well from behind the camera. However, take this outdoors and it's practically useless if you want to use it from behind the camera, it simply will not work. Um, however, it will work up to again, three to four meters in front of the camera or to the sides, but from behind the camera, it's pretty much useless. Therefore, my recommendation would be to skip this remote control and instead wait for this remote control to be supported with the A6400. Now, this is the Sony RMT P1 BT remote control and it's a Bluetooth remote. However, today, which is May 24th, 2019, this remote is not yet supported with a Sony A6400. However, it will be supported with the next firmware update, which is due out this summer. And this is the firmware update. It's also gonna add support for Animal Eye AF with the A6400. That same firmware will then enable the support of this remote control. Now, I'm using this remote already with my Sony A7 III and it works really, really, really well. It works up to a distance of around about 18 meters or 60 feet reliably, and it works outdoors and it works from behind the camera. And yeah, if you put any objects in between your remote and the camera, it still continues to work. So this is a really nice remote. Um, I'm not gonna talk about all of its functions and features now. I've actually done a setup and user guide for this remote, which I will link to. So if you're interested, in it finding out a little bit more about this remote, then click that link and take a look. But yeah, this would be my recommended remote for the A6400. It is the Sony RMT P1 BT remote. But as I mentioned, I just wanna be clear on this. As of today, May 24th, 2019, this remote is not yet supported with the Sony A6400. But when it gets the next firmware update in the summer, this remote will then be supported. And this is the one that I would recommend. And the next accessory I'm going to recommend is actually two accessories in one. I'm going to recommend the Peak Design Cuff wrist strap and also the Peak Design Slide Light, which is a neck and shoulder strap. Now, the wrist strap is really, really, really good. You simply put it over your wrist, you pull it tight, and this magnetic clasp here holds it in place. And with that clasp too, it's not going anywhere. Then to release it, you simply twist your wrist and it comes off. Now to connect it to the A6400, you have these Peak Design um, clips, which they call the anchor system, and you simply click it in place like so. Then you'll find, put it back on again, and hopefully it's not going anywhere. Now this is really, it's a really tough strap. It's really, really well made. I've had it for like a year or so now already, and it still looks brand new. So that's definitely my recommendation for a wrist strap. It's a Peak Design cuff, and I think it's available in a couple of different colors if you don't like black. My next recommended accessory is their, also the Peak Design, what they call the slide light, which is this strap here. As you can see at each end, it's also got the anchor system. So again, you simply connect it to the anchors here and here, and now you have a, a neck and a shoulder strap. So what I really, really like about the Peak Design system is that you can really quickly change from the wrist strap to a shoulder strap in absolutely no time at all. So they really are nice products. And this slide light, it again, it's really, really well made. It feels similar to a, a seat belt in your car. And I don't believe it's going to be breaking or wearing out anytime soon. So those are my two recommendations, the Peak Design Cuff wrist strap and the Peak Design Slide Light. 
So my next recommended accessory is going to be a case. In this instance here, I've got two cases. I've got the Lopro Apex 100 AW, and I've got the Apex 110 AW. So which one to use? Well, it really comes down to which lens you're using. So if you've got the 16 to 50 kit lens attached, which is this tiny little lens here, then the Apex 100 is a really good fit. You can simply slot it in like so. And as you'll see, it's a very, very comfortable fit. You can also fit in a wrist strap there. I don't know if you'd fit in a neck strap as well. Oh, let me just try it. No, that's not gonna fit. So if you want to use it with it, um, the next strap as well, that's, that's not going to fit. But with a wrist strap on there, that will be no problem. You've got a little pocket here where you can put in an SD card. Um, you've got a little section down front where you can, again, in a little bit of netting, you can drop in some spare batteries. You've got a, it does come with a, a neck strap. I've not got it on here, but you can also attach a neck strap. You can also connect it to a belt. And also there's a waterproof cover under here to protect the case and your camera from the elements. So that's the Lopro Apex 100 AW, and it's a good fit if you've only got the, the kit lens for 16 to 50. So next I'll talk about the Apex 110 and which lens fit into that case. So the next larger case from Lopro is the Apex 110 AW. And this case, again, it's pretty much identical to its smaller smaller brother the Apex 100 but instead you've got a couple of SD pockets here um, again you've, you've got the rain cover you've got a space for dropping a few batteries in but it's it's a much bigger case and I'm going to go through a couple of lenses and show you which ones fit comfortably so one of the most popular lenses and one of my favorite travel lenses is the 18 to 135 now on the A6400 this fits nicely into the Apex 110. As you can see, fits in comfortably. And there's also room if you're taking the shoulder strap with you. The strap again, at least for the Peak Design Slide Light strap, also fits in there very nicely. Now, if you're using another lens, I don't know, maybe the 18 to 105, for example, which I know is also a very, very popular lens. And I'll just show you how this one fits. Again, 18 to 105. Again, this fits in. I'd have to say it's it fits, but it is a it's a much tighter fit. So it, it goes together, but you can feel. Would I use it? I probably would. I would drop it inside of my rucksack. I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you do plan to use the 18 to 105, just be aware that it is a it is a pretty tight fit in there and yeah that's the only only way that you can put it in you will still fit in the next strap that's not an issue so yeah that's with a 18 to 105 um, another lens a popular lens is the six sigma 16 millimeter which I've only recently picked up, which is this lens here. Let me just attach it quickly. And again, into the case. As you can see, that's a, it's a good fit. It's a comfortable fit, that is, definitely. So I can definitely recommend it for a 16 Sigma 16 millimeter lens. And how about the Sigma 30 millimeter? Again, that's a, also a very popular lens. And again, one I actually only picked up a few weeks back now. Let me try. So this time I've already tried this and it fits much better if you don't have, if you have a, a lens hood in place instead of inverted. So with the lens hood on like so, you can see it's a comfortable fit and it's not moving around too much either. So yeah, that's the Low Pro Apex 110, this one, yep, AW, and yeah, it's a good case. I typically just drop them inside of my rucksack, but again, yeah, they're good cases and I can definitely recommend them. One other thing that I wanted to talk about, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, is a rucksack 
option. Now, I'm just going to grab it here. This I only actually purchased it a couple of weeks ago. And this is the Low Pro Flipside Trek BP250AW. Now, they do do larger versions. I think they do a 350 and a 450, but I wanted the smallest option possible. And um, that's this rucksack here. Now I'm gonna do a review on this rucksack, so I'm not gonna go into too many details on it right now, but I will just show you the basics. Now you've got a opening here and a bit of a faff, but as you can see, where's my A6400 gone? It will fit the A6400 in comfortably, and you can also put in a lens. Let me take, oh, just grab a 16 millimeter as well. As you can see, it will also accept a lens nicely like that. Now you can fiddle around with the configuration a little bit and you can, depending on the lenses, you can squeeze in the A6400 and maybe three lenses. But personally, I found if you're keeping the lens mounted to the camera, then it's good for one lens on the camera plus an additional lens, depending on which lens you're using. But yeah, this simply fastens up like so. It's nicely protected, nicely padded at the top. Now I just picked this up. I don't know what I've got in here. Thankfully nothing, nothing dodgy. So you've got a nice bit of space in the top as well, where you can easily squeeze in a small lightproof waterproof jacket, your sandwiches, or whatever you want to put in there. Of course, you could put in another lens if you, if you wanted to. Um, yeah, you've got a pocket on the front. You've got a slot here, which would probably accept a iPad mini or something, or definitely your phone. You've got a zip pocket. You've got a nice bit of space down the front. You've also got, again, you've got a waterproof cover. And yeah, I'm not gonna really go into the details. You've got side pocket. I will mention those. You've got two side pockets and straps for holding a tripod. So yeah, it's a nice bag. I will do a review on it very soon, just once I've used it for a little bit longer. Um, I've used it all day. I've carried it for eight hours and it's extremely comfortable. So I did really, really want a small, lightweight rucksack for my A6400, and this certainly ticks that box. So that's the Lopro Flipside Trek BP250AW. So that's it for cases and bags. I'm gonna come on to my last accessory in just a second. And the final accessory I'm gonna recommend for the Sony A6400 is this small rig cold shoe relocation plate. Now, why would you want to use this? Well, you'd want to use it if you're using an external microphone like the Rode Video Micro, micro and you want to vlog and see yourself in the LCD screen. Because as you can see here, with a mic mounted to the hot shoe of the A6400, it does block the screen, even more so if you have a wind defender on there. Therefore, I'll just show you how this works quickly. Remove that, you simply connect the plate to the hot shoe and it becomes a cold shoe because there's no electronic contacts on here. And then you simply mount the mic like so, tighten it up. And now if I put the screen back up, you'll see, you should be able to see yourself. So as you can see, it's simply moved the microphone over to the right-hand side of the camera um, and you can see the screen absolutely perfectly. It also, it doesn't interfere, it doesn't get in, in the way of the shutter button, the C1 button, it doesn't interfere with the uh, control dial on the top. You can still use this along with the aperture control dial as well. These are all still very accessible. One thing I will mention, which isn't great, is as you'll see, the cable now does Come along the back here and if you're not careful when you close down the screen it will get trapped so you just need to be mindful of that and move it out of the way when you do close the screen down so yeah that's for small rig cold shoe relocation plate and that's for the last accessory i'm going to be talking about so we've come to the end of my top 10 recommended accessories for the sony a6400 so if you found this video helpful thumbs up would be appreciated and if you're using any of these accessories yourself and can give any feedback, then please do let me know in the comments down below. 
Also, if there are any of us accessories that you can recommend for the A6400, again, please let me know down in the comments below. And like I mentioned earlier, if you check down in the description field of this video or the pinned comment, there you'll find a link to my A6400 accessories guide on my website, where you're gonna find links to all of these accessories that I've talked about, as well as many more accessories such as filters, cages, flashes, and gimbals as well, along with many more accessories. Um, yeah, you'll also find my A6400 lenses guide linked down there, along with sample images from the Sony A6400. So until next time, happy shooting.